Now let's consider the properties of the wave function psi x. We derived the Schrodinger equation in the previous video. But then, what does the solution psi x represent? For example, let's consider what psi x represents in the case of electrons. Remind the double slit experiment. In the double slit experiment, it was not possible to predict where a single electron would go through exactly, and only by injecting many electrons, we can know the paths where electrons often go through. In other words, we can only understand where the electron exists in a probabilistic way. Therefore, we speculate that psi x is related to the probability of the presence of an electron at position x. However, the solution psi x of Schrodinger's equation can also be a function of negative values and complex numbers, so we cannot treat it as a probability as it is. We may take the square of psi x as a probability, but in the case of complex numbers, simple squaring produces another complex number again, so it doesn't work. Instead, we can make it positive value by taking the complex conjugate and multiplying it by the original function. This form is also called the square of the norm of a complex number. In fact, it is understood that the square of the norm of the wave function corresponds to the probability, because if so, the properties of various atoms and molecules can be explained very well. Strictly speaking, this function corresponds to the probability density, not the probability itself. For one-dimensional problems, it represents the probability per unit length. The probability density rho x times the infinitesimal distance dx is defined as the probability at position x. Given that the square of the norm of this wave function is the probability density, I would like to explain the four conditions that the wave function should satisfy. The first important condition is normalization. Note that the sum of the probabilities should be always one in general. Hence, if rho x dx means the probability at position x, the sum of all the probabilities for all x should be 1. This means that the result must be 1 when the probability density is integrated in all spaces. This is a very important condition for defining wave functions. The second is that it should be a one-valued function. Since the probability of the existence of an electron at a position x should be determined uniquely, the value of the wave function should be also determined uniquely. If the function itself has several values for x, it cannot determine the probability uniquely. The third is that it should be a finite function. Because probability should be also finite, psi x itself must be finite without diverging in this way. The fourth is that it should be continuous. It should not be discontinuous like this. Remember that these conditions are also required to solve the simplest Schrodinger equation problem, so-called box potential.